All right, today we're going to be talking about why most Roblox devs are starving artists. So starving artists are people who are hardworking, passionate. They make beautiful creations, as many people would say. They make things that people love and that they love, right? Their close friends like it, but they don't make any money off of it. And usually they're broke. They don't have a high paying job elsewhere. And their biggest skill set is art. So people wonder, why are these people broke? Well, there's a reason why people don't make money from their art. And Roblox development is an art, right? We talk about how it's a business, but it's also an art. And it always has been and always will be. So when you're an artist, you're focused very heavy on creation, right? You are focused on creation. And creation is a very powerful thing, right? We can make very beautiful Roblox maps. We can make GFX for people on the X, like their profile pictures. We can make game icons, thumbnails. We can make even great games, right? Great passion projects. But the problem comes in at this point right here. Right here, we have the point where this creation reaches people. For somebody to make money on something, they need it to be seen by other individuals, whether that's in real life, right? That's one level. Usually it's a very small amount of people if you're promoting something to somebody in real life, like a group of 10, 50, 100 people max, or it's on social media. That is the biggest, most powerful marketing method in the world now that we live in this modern age. So the people are out here, right? People, this is your audience. And guess what? What does your audience have? What do they have that you want If you're starving, they have money, but what causes the starving artist to stay stuck here with their creation, their Roblox game, their painting, their GFX, their maps, whatever it is that they love, but have it never get seen by people. Or if it is seen, they don't get money. What is the missing step here? What is the dividing line? Well, the dividing line is something called distribution. Distribution is when you are getting something, getting your product out there to people. Most artists never focus on this part of the equation because their heart is where, right? Their heart is with their creation. That's where their passion is. Okay. So now doing the distribution part, which often involves a big scary word called marketing, and even scarier, sales, that doesn't sound so appealing to them, right? They'd rather just sit there making their art. They'd rather just sit there developing their game in Roblox Studio. They'd rather just sit there making their GFX or making whatever it is that they love making. So they never focus on this step, right? So we see a lot of games on Roblox succeeding that people don't like. Like a lot of people in this community do not like Grow a Garden, but that game has players. It keeps reaching continuously higher CCU records. Same for Steel of Brain Rod. This weekend, it hit 24 million players online at once. That's a world record for the amount of players ever online in any online game on Roblox or not. They focused on distribution. Now, the problem is people will say, well, the creation part of Steel of Brain Rot, of Grow a Garden, of these top simple games that are succeeding is bad. The passion part wasn't put into it. So, therefore, they don't deserve the audience or the money. Not deserving, right? They say instead, the money that went to steal a brain rot, grow a garden, it should have gone to passion projects. It should have gone to the complex games that you see at the bottom of Roblox search that nobody wants to play. Like Frontlines, which has barely any players online. People will say, well, all the players that Grow a Garden has, those players should go to Frontlines because Grow a Garden isn't as good of a game, right? So clearly there is a disconnect here. There is a problem that is making it so highly passionate artists Developers who focus on making their games beautiful in the way that they look, in different things that people say, oh yeah, that game should be successful, are not correlating with the audience that they get. The reason for this is they don't focus on the distribution step. So if we look at this from more of an economic perspective, 
What this is, is this is supply. So let's step away from thinking of this as a piece of art. Let's now say this is a product, okay? Because games are art and product at the same time. So this game is a product. When you're focusing on the creation side, you're focusing on the supply side of that process, right? Supply versus demand. Distribution is focusing on the demand side. So what successful devs do, what most of them do, is unlike passion-first artists, they focus on the distribution side first. They focus on demand before they focus on supply. So instead of trying to force fit the market to like their game, they are making a game that the market would want already. And that's why we see so many games that people like to call slop succeeding. Because whether that game has the innate passion or quality that you think should be in a Roblox game or not, doesn't co correlate with whether or not the market wants it directly. So people label these games that people think are low quality, which are really just simple games, as slop as a way to cope with the fact that the games they think should be getting all those players aren't. So how do you stop being a starving artist as a Roblox developer, right? We've come full circle. We've said starving artists don't focus on distribution, and that means they do not focus on demand side economics first. They focus on supply side. This makes it so they spend time on projects that the market may not actually have a demand for, right? The solution is to focus on distribution before you focus on creation. This means that you focus on these big, ugly words that artists hate, that passionate Roblox devs hate, that most people on the, in the development community hate. You focus on these things first. Whether you like it or not, whether you enjoy it or not, you have to focus on these things first. Because again, we want to tap into demand of players or of your customers if you're taking commissions or selling dev assets or making dev content, whatever Roblox development career path you're on right now. You want to focus on the demand side first. What do people want? Let me give you an example. So the top video on my channel is the easiest beginner guide to Roblox scripting. I knew that video would be successful before I put it out. Maybe not as successful as it is. I didn't know it would get over 4.7 million views and counting, but I knew it would do well. Why is that? I was focusing on demand first, right? And in business, we're often looking at problems that people want solved. So I focused on solving the problem of learning scripting, which is the most coveted in-studio skill, right? Most people want to learn that if they're going to make their Roblox games. So because I gave them a solution to that, that helped them solve that problem at scale, that helped millions of people, and they thought this is the easiest guide, right? This is it, Smarty's guide, number one best guide in the world. Because I focused on their demand, I focused on making it tailored as a solution to their problems. Oh, scripting's too hard. Okay, here's the easiest guide. Right, So that is dev content. That is a form of Roblox development, teaching people about this field. It's the same thing across the board, right? People want a fun, simple game to play on their iPad or their iPhone, right? So where do they go? They go to steal a brain rot or grow a garden. Those, those games were made with that in mind. It wasn't made like Arsenal, this shooter that takes a decent amount of skill to be good at. They were made as games that don't take any skill at all, really. Steal a brain rot and grow a garden are incredibly easy to play. That is on purpose, right? Because they know most people on Roblox are mobile players and most people are young. They're young players. When you serve that desire at scale of the biggest demographic on Roblox, you get the most players. As proven by those games' success, they are reaching CCU peaks again and again. Every single weekend that goes by, every few weekends, they seem to be hitting a new peak. And it's for a reason. They tapped into player demand. So the solution, right, is to focus on strategy-first Roblox game development. The solution is to focus on marketing and sales first. The solution is to focus on distribution first. And the first step is market research. So you want to look at what is successful in the market right now. If you are making games, you want to look at the top games, right? Grow a Garden, Steal a Brain Rot, 99 Nights in the Forest, the top three games on Roblox, getting millions of players online at once. 
These games are some of the best case studies to see what people actually want to play. Then, you don't have to necessarily copy these games, but you have to use them as a model. Where is the demand at? What do people want? And then you can start doing the creation side, right? But the next thing that we want to do is we want to tap into lean startup theory. Lean startup theory is the idea that you make a very simple version of your product or your company before you make some complex game or product, before you even knew if the market wants it, before you've even tested it. So you make what's called an MVP. So an MVP is a very simple version, the simplest possible version, the most bare bones version of your game that is playable, fun, and preferably has monetization as well. An MVP is going to have 20% of what you plan for your game to have, roughly. It's going to have about 20%. It's going to have the core gameplay systems, the core loop made, and it's going to have the bare bones minimum builds that you actually need for the game to be playable, right? Gameplay comes first when building your game, if you want to be the most pragmatic. You make an MVP, and then you try to ship that MVP, right, get to distribution as fast as humanly possible, right? You're able to get a game out faster when you make simple games first and when you make minimum viable products. Then, right, you want to ship that game, get an icon, thumbnail on it, get sponsors running, promote it on social media, do everything you can to promote it. Or if you have friends, have them test it out, right? Get them in there. Then you're going to get feedback, right? You're going to get analytics on your Roblox analytics dashboard. You're going to get players telling you what they think. And you're going to see how many players the games get. You're going to see if people actually want the game or not. And from there, you can begin to iterate based on that feedback until you can get results. Now, that often involves updates, but it also often involves scrapping game ideas that don't work, cutting your sunk costs, and moving on to a new idea that has more potential to succeed in the market. Now, this is why most devs are starving artists. This is it. They focus on the creation side first. They spend months or years on complex games that never ship, which means they never get an MVP to the market. They're stuck in the sunk costs of hours and hours and hours and hours of programming, of building, of modeling, of UI design on a product that they don't even know if the market wants. They don't even know if the demand side is there. So instead, we want to flip the script on how most people approach development. I learned this over years. I learned this from countless mistakes making complex games before I and my team was ready. So I want you to skip over my problems that I had in development. This is the number one thing devs need to understand. It's the strategy first mindset. And strategy first, a huge part of it, is focusing on demand side first. It's focusing on player desire rather than just your own heart's desire. And then getting that market aligned game out to the market as fast as you possibly can so you can see if it's actually going to work. And if that means getting called a slop creator, like a slop dev, or a cash grabber, so be it, right? That's hobbyists who are still stuck in this ineffective system, coping and moralizing and shaming you and projecting onto you their own failures. So ignore everybody who calls your game slop. You're now doing development right, so take that as a good sign. Congratulations. All right, hope you enjoyed. See you next video.